Hi, my name is Martin Perhiniak, and welcome on PSD Touch Plus to this new series, Digital Art for Beginners. Thanks to the success of the first series, the Photoshop Basics, I decided to continue with the second series, which is also for beginners, but this one is about the techniques used in Photoshop to create digital art. This first episode is just an introduction to this 25 episode series, where I'm mainly going to talk about the genres and professions in the industry and how to set up Photoshop. But in the following episodes, I will talk a lot about brushes, composition, sketching, working with colors, perspective, using light, proportions of the human body, capturing movement, drapery, drawing specific things like the human head, hair, hands, eyes, and we will create together photo art, matte paintings, and concept art. Hopefully after watching all 25 episodes, anyone can feel comfortable to start making digital art in Photoshop. I am using Photoshop CS5 and some of the techniques that I'm going to show is only available in this version, but 90% of the things I will cover you can also follow and do in previous versions. For this series I'm going to use my own digital paintings and photographs and I'm also going to create some new artwork for some of the episodes. Let me switch to Bridge by clicking on this little icon here on the top where I can easily show you some examples of my work and um, by selecting a file here and pressing space we can see a full screen preview. I usually work from photo references but most of the times only for just a specific part of the artwork. In this case I only used a photograph for the face. When you are previewing images in Bridge, you can always click on the image to zoom into the actual size of the image. And then if you click again, you can zoom out. You can use right and left arrows to move to the next image. I drew this scanned illustration when I was 12. And a couple of years later, when I first started using Photoshop, this is what I did. I colored and added these effects. This is just an example of one of my first artworks that I created in Photoshop. And here's another one. It's more like a concept art. I also like creating caricatures. And these are more like uh, digital paintings. Here's an example where you can see the initial sketch and then the final result. Here again, if I uh, zoom closer, you can see this is the actual size. Even Bridge has to take time until it can load in properly. So you can see from the original sketch, this is the final uh, result. Then there's another example from the original sketch, the final result. Let me just go back again and show the other one. Also what you can do in Bridge to compare images you can select two images at the same time and use Control B or Command B on the keyboard, which is the review mode. And in this mode, you can compare images and you can even use the loop tool by clicking on the image when you have more than one selected. And then you can click on any of the images with this loop tool and you can compare all little details and by using command you can move on both the images at the same time. Now in this case the original sketch was smaller in size that's why we don't have that great control in between the two but if you keep the same size this way you can easily compare uh, specific versions of your artwork. Here is also another file that I just saved to be able to show the steps that I used in another painting. So from the original sketch, what you can see here on the left, this is how I started building up the composition. Then I ended up with the blocks uh, of colors that I wanted to use. I started to setting up the lights for the image and I started detailing the face 
and then the background you can see that's the sketch this is now starting to become more detailed and I spent a lot of hours on the background here and the clouds and the buildings and then again I spent another several hours on the dress and the henna and the hand so you can see the whole process of this artwork here in this example I will show you all the techniques needed to be able to paint images like these and besides showing the techniques I would mainly want to motivate and inspire you to start creating art with Photoshop that's what this series is all about before I show you how to set up Photoshop I would like to show you some websites where you can find inspiration and where you can also learn more about digital art so let me just switch to my browser first of all of course PSD Touch Plus which is a great website where you can find lots of inspirational articles if you go to articles and choose inspiration you can find many posts about digital paintings just like this one 54 mind-blowing digital paintings these collections are great just to have an idea what you can achieve in Photoshop but if you prefer books I recommend Ballistic Publishing they have the most amazing books on digital art they have the digital art annual called Exposé but they also have masterclass tutorial books on the most popular digital art genres like concept art digital painting matte painting and character design I highly recommend these books if you want to get inspiration or if you want to learn more from professionals but there is also another great website called DeviantArt where you can register and have a profile and and show your work to the world and get feedback from other artists if you are searching for images that you can use as a reference instead of using Google I recommend Pinterest which is a really interesting new website where you can search just like in Google but you will find images pinned by other users so these images were the ones that someone else found useful and interesting you can also pin images if you want and you can have your own pin board but as you can see here I search for digital art and it found me more than 200,000 images and it's an endless scroll if I start to scroll down there's, it's a never-ending page so it always loads in more and more images and most of these images are quite high quality as well and obviously if you click on an image you can see uh, the higher resolution version of it another great website is Behance where you can also search by creative fields and these are more project based topics but I also highly recommend to come here and to check this page out you can also create your creative portfolio using this website so once again you can share your artwork with a network of creative professionals also for inspiration I recommend Abduzido here you can also filter by topics but what I mainly like is the daily inspiration on this website which is always great fun to check out it's good to start the day with going through the daily inspiration of, on this website and of course there are so many other websites that can be useful to find inspiration or to publish your work but I don't want to spend too much time on this I rather show you how to set up Photoshop to do digital art so let me just switch back to Photoshop and I just close this image I opened one of my paintings and you can see here on the right my layers as you can see I try to show as much as possible from my layers so I always keep my layers panel big and all the other panels small to be able to have enough space to do the painting itself 
And one of the panels I highly recommend to use, this one is called layer comps. The way I think about layer comps is that it's some kind of extension of the layers panel, because instead of turning on and off lots of different layers, you can save compositions based on your layers visibility and placement and even layer styles. So to show you what I mean, I have all my layers here and if I click on draft, it will turn off all the paint layers and it will only show the bottom layer called draft. So you can see how I started with this painting. Then I can go to my next layer composition and it shows only the clean version of the illustration. So once again, the draft and the clean version. Then I can go to the colored version and uh, at the same time while I'm selecting these layer compositions you can see that my layer visibility changes. Then I can go to details, so again colors, details and then adding the shadow at the bottom and if I want to I can also go to hard edge. So this adds that black edge around it, so without and with the edge. This last one is optional. This is just something that I found interesting on this specific composition. So apart from having the layers always as big as possible or as long as possible, it's also good to have layer comps uh, close to the layers panel. And we are going to use this in uh, later episodes. Besides the layers panel, I usually work with adjustments and masks. So they are also here on the top. I just need to click on them and they will expand. If I double click on them, they will collapse back. So I can see again more of my layers. If you are working on a Mac, I also recommend to use the window application frame option. If I turn this off, you can see that I will see through and I will see the background. I don't really like this way of working, so I usually choose this option and leave it on, so application frame, and it keeps it more clean. Even if I zoom out, I won't see anything in the background. It's good to know that you can change the color of the background, so the document windows background. If you right click on it, here you can select the default gray or black colors, or you can select a custom color. The color that I'm using is a bit darker than the 50% gray. I use the 33% for brightness. That's just a bit easier on the eye if you work long hours in Photoshop. To zoom in and out, I use the keyboard shortcut, holding down Z and then click and dragging to the right and left. You can zoom easily in and out. If I want to fit to screen, I usually use Command or Control Zero. When I'm zoomed in, I always hold down Space and click to move around the image. It's good to know that in Photoshop you can also rotate your view by holding down R the keyboard shortcut R, you will get the rotate tool, which you can use then to rotate the view itself. And you will even see an indication of the rotation in the middle. So when I let go R, it switches back to my previous tool. For example, if I'm working with the brush tool on a layer, I can use the brush tool and then holding down R, so instead of just pressing R, Press and hold it down, then rotate the image. And when you let go, it will switch back to the brush tool, just like with the space. So it won't stay on the view rotation tool. And if you want to switch back, or if you want to get rid of the rotation in the view, you can press escape. It's also good to customize keyboards in Photoshop. If you go to edit keyboard shortcuts, there you can customize any keyboard shortcut in Photoshop. First of all, what I usually change is the undo, redo, or step backward and forward to function one and function two. I think it's just much faster to use these two options. And if you are a Mac user, then make sure that under the system preferences, you go to keyboard and there you choose use all function keys as standard function keys. Only if this one is turned on, then you can use the function keys for Photoshop keyboard shortcuts. 
and it's also good to know some of the preferences of Photoshop, mainly the performance. If you go to Photoshop preferences performance or on PC under edit preferences performance, here you can set up the memory usage and scratch disks. Obviously, the more you give to Photoshop, the faster it will be. And it's good to have the OpenGL drawing enabled if possible. It depends on your video card. And you can also change the history states. I usually keep it somewhere around 100. The default option is 20. Again, if you add more history states, that means you will be able to go back more in time whenever you work in Photoshop. So you have more undos. But the more you ask Photoshop to save, the slower the application can be. So it's better to keep it somewhere around 100 or less. The other option which is also useful is under the general panel and it's called HUD color picker. Now this is again something that you will only find in CS5 but if you set this to hue wheel then you can use whenever you have the brush tool selected you can use the keyboard shortcut Control alt and command together these three keyboard shortcuts and then click with your mouse to have the color wheel. Here you can select first the hue on the wheel and then the brightness and the saturation in the center. Instead of having a color panel or swatches panel open, this is the fastest way to quickly select new colors. And once you select it, you can already start painting with it. To change the size of your brush, you should use Ctrl and Alt together and then click. On PC you should right click, that's the difference between Mac and PC in this case. And if you hold down Ctrl Alt and the mouse or after you press the mouse, you don't need to hold down Ctrl Alt anymore, but make sure you hold down the mouse. And if you drag right and left, you can change the size of the brush. If you drag down, you can make your brush harder. If you drag up, you can make your brush softer. So all of this in one keyboard shortcut, Ctrl Alt and click or on PC Ctrl Alt right click. And last but not least, I would like to point out another great feature that you can use in CS5. It's called the Configurator, which is an official plugin for Photoshop from Adobe, which you can download from this website, labs.adobe.com, and you will be able to find here Adobe Configurator. It can be used for Photoshop and also for InDesign. And I just quickly show you this application. This is how it looks like. You can build your own panels and then save them and load them into Photoshop. Now, let me just show you. For example, this watermark panel here on the right is also made with this uh, application or this plugin. But I also have the useful options panel where I save some of the options that I don't have saved keyboards for, but also I, I prefer to use them. So for example, flip canvas horizontally, we'll uh, flip the whole canvas and I can have a look at my whole artwork in a completely different angle. Another reason why I use this option, Adobe Configurator, is to use reference images. So to open another panel that you create with this uh, plugin, you need to go to Window, Extensions, and here you will see all your saved panels. Whenever you create a new panel, you should always close Photoshop and then open it up again. And then you will be able to see your new exported panel. So I have Hair Samples panel just to show you what you can achieve uh, with this application or plugin. Um, I will dock this panel here on the left. This is where usually I keep my references if I need to use them. So for example, when I get to the point with a digital painting where I, I would like to um, uh, draw the hair, the details on the hair, then I usually open up this hair samples panel. And here I can even choose between images that I can use as a reference. So I can easily sample colors from this or from these images. By using the eyedropper tool, I can click 
on the image and then drag my eyedropper tool onto the image itself. So once again, click and drag over the image. And this is the way I can quickly sample a color from the image. This is a great way whenever you need to draw hair. So you keep a reference on the left and you can easily use the eyedropper tool to select a color from the hair. You don't even need to select the eyedropper tool. You can have the brush selected and just hold down Alt and click and drag from the canvas over to the image. That also works as the eyedropper tool. But when you let go Alt and you've selected the color, it switches back to your brush tool automatically. So just to show you this quickly, let me zoom a bit closer to this part of the image and I just quickly draw with a, that color that I just selected. I, so this is the color that I selected. Then I alt click again, drag over. I select a bit, bit darker one and then I alt click and drag and I select an even darker one. So as you can see, this is a really effective way to use references in Photoshop. And you can save as many panels as you want. You can have your hair samples, you can have your eye samples, samples for skin colors, different textures, mat materials. It's like saving your brushes that we are going to talk about in a following episode, but by using this plugin, the Adobe Configurator. And if you want to make a panel similar to this one, I show you quickly, you need to select this option called Tab Navigator. And once you have this selected or placed on your panel, you can use the plus and minus to create new tabs. And on the tabs, I used the Swift or Image Loader option to place images. I keep these images on my computer, but you can also link to images from websites and use them in your panels. But if you do that, you will need to be always connected to the internet. That's all what I wanted to cover in this first episode and I hope you enjoyed it and you heard already some useful tips and techniques. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about the brush panel and how to use a tablet because using tablets are also very essential if you want to do digital art. You can work with a mouse, but it's always better to use a tablet. So I will talk more about how to choose and set up a graphic tablet with Photoshop. And I hope you will join me next time as well. And feel free to add your comments about this new series because I'm always interested in your feedback. Thanks a lot for your attention today and see you next time.